14th annual Women's Week, the purpose of which is to provide a forum for examining issues concerning the status of women and to encourage people to work towards social change. Each year, a theme is selected and expressed through the speakers, workshops, and films of Women's Week. This year's theme is humor, she who laughs, laughs. Humor was chosen because humor is often used as a tool for survival and to promote social change. This week's participate, participants incorporate humor in their lives in order to, to struggle for their personal, professional, and political choices. More information about Women's Week is available at an information booth which is located in the Commons area here in the Memorial Union. During this week, there will also be a book sale in the gallery of the Memorial Union, and there you can purchase books about women's literature, crafts, and cards. Also in the gallery, there are exhibits by campus and community organizations, and information is available at the gallery. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the Women's Week Committee who have worked so hard to bring this week together. And I would like to extend a special thank you to Pat Miller of the ISU Lectures Committee for participating on the Women's Week Committee, and also to Gina Matkin and Peg Longquist who have served as advisors to our committee. I would also like to thank Government of the Student Body for funding the Women's Week Committee, and also Women in Communications Incorporated, the Committee on Lectures, and the Student Union Board who co-sponsor several of our speakers and films. Again, I would like to welcome you to the keynote address and invite you to enjoy several other activities during Women's Week because she who laughs, laughs. And now I would like Adina Rollins to come up, who is Vice President of the Black Student Government. As Dory just stated, my name is Adina Rollins and I am Vice President of Black Student Government. And I have the distinct honor tonight of introducing this evening's guest speaker. Our speaker is an author who is well known for her long years of activism in the name of simple quotable quote, say it best. So without further ado, I'd like to give to you Flo Kennedy. Okay, I got famous talking about kicking ass. Now that I can't stand up or walk, I have to work out some other techniques. <laughs> we begin with the testicular approach. Okay, now the first question is, can I get up here without breaking my ass? Yes. Okay, all right, now let's pretend this is a wheelchair and roll me up to the thing. Okay. Okay, it's hard to be funny when you're in a wheelchair. Okay, ah oh, yes, white men have good ideas. <laughs> Gary said it's easier to push this up here. Okay. okay, okay. Now it all depends on whether I'll be able to stay up here. Big question. Okay, all right. Now where's my ship? My blue this, yes. This is best that she's gonna help me keep my ship going. Okay. All this shit is also. Okay. That's it. Okay. All right. Now, by the way, this is from Flo Kennedy's uh, floating deathbed, and there'll be some to pass around. But nobody gets any stuff unless you come up and sing. So, how many people are going to come up and join the off key chorale? <laughs> if you join the chorale and there are too many of you, you get copies of the song. Come on, that nice blonde back there. Come on up here, sweetheart. Oh, is it gray? Good. Okay. In our society, gray, gray means you're no longer fuckable, but she obviously uh, makes, puts a lie to that concept. Okay, come on, everyone that wants to sing the song. Okay, come on. Okay. All right, come on. Come on, the twins. Okay. Sophia and Bridget. Okay, we want to integrate this. Let's have a few white people. Okay, Gary, you're brave. Come on. Jeff, come on. Carly, come on. Come on. 
I want somebody from the gay and lesbian group because I've got a song that has embarrassed my sister so much she won't sing it. I qualify. Oh, good for us. Okay, come on. Okay, all right. See that you've got a song. Everybody's got a song sheet. Okay. All right, nobody gets song sheets unless you come up here. Okay, now let me, uh, bet, uh, give me a copy of all the songs. We're going to start with the feminist prayer. Okay. Let me get that. Just give me all of them and I'll arrange it. Okay. If I put them out, I can How many of you ever heard of the Tawana Brawley case? We're going to talk about that at great length and analyze sexism and racism through the context of the Brawley case and why you don't believe when you believe in the Pentagon. Okay. All right, we're skipping. There's a, so these songs are more or less predicated on the murders in Atlanta some years back. How many people remember that? When the little kids were being found, the Ku Klux Klan were apparently giving them a soul kiss that tur turned out to be murderous. Okay, we're going to start with the feminist prayer, and we're going to wind up with Reagan, Reagan probably. Okay, after the feminist prayer, we're going to do some women's songs, We Shall Overcome songs. Okay, put that after the feminist prayer, and then we'll have, who needs a We Shall Overcome song? Does anybody else want to come up and get We Shall Overcome songs? No, okay. All right, you're sitting on your apathy. How many of you thought Iowa State was apathetic and right wing? Now you, now you know why most people don't move, because they're like you. Okay, all right. How about the feminist prayer? Okay, how about Battle Hymn of Women? It's on the same page, okay? All right, and how about uh, We Shall Overcome song? Grace, are you going to come up and just not? Okay, good. She can't do the lesbian song. It embarrasses her too much. She never goes to church, but she's very much endowed with the religious values of the right wing society. She wouldn't sign a Martin Luther King for, for president, I mean, for a birthday holiday, so she's very Republican in her attitude, but she's a nice person. And if I ever got killed for being crazy, she would be the first one to come to my rescue, or the rescue of the cause. Okay, let's start with the feminist prayer to the tune of uh, the Lord's Prayer. Okay. Okay, here we go. I'll start it off in case you don't remember the tune, especially to the Lord's Prayer. I'd like to think that most of you don't. Okay. Our Mother, which art in heaven, sister shall be thy name. Our washing Deathbed, you find it, well, especially when you can't eat because of your plumbing, your throat gets very dry. Okay. The one thing wrong with this society keeps us alive too long. It's not funny, but it's kind of a fact of life that being kept alive is bad. Fortunately, I can still get to my grips economically, but the idea of living beyond your usefulness 
to the point where you really are more of a problem because of chronic illnesses than anything else. It's something we got to deal with, not by killing the people, but by forcing the government to get up off of its Pentagon money and spread it around. Let me have my bag. I think I have it. Maybe I don't need a cough drop. We'll see. Okay, Gay, do you have any more of those little green mints? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, that's all right. Never mind. Okay, next is the battle hymn of women. In my com uh, infirm condition, I dare to talk battle. But that's one of the best ways to deal with infirmity is to talk kick and ass even if you can't. Okay, all right, here we go. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the flame of women's race. Thank Kept smoldering for centuries, now burning in this age. We no longer will be prisoners in that same old gilded cage. softly to be gentle and to smile, expecting us to change ourselves with every passing style, said the only work for women was to clean and sweep and file, that's why we're marching on, march, 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 move on over sharp piece of wood. We have a little crisis here due to my infirmity and my age. What we're going to do is we're going to make a cushion out of my soul yarn, okay? Okay. You've got to be resourceful when you're on your deathbed. Right. Okay. Okay, now you put this in front of my knees, drop this right over my knees, and then my shins will become... See, poor people and oppressed people and, and over-aged people aren't supposed to complain, but you have to complain bitterly whether it's to your newspaper. I'll tell you about boycotting your major newspaper when I finish here and I get my shit together. Because you have to learn how to deal with authority and big, heavy, important people. And this was done for my convenience, but it also has a little sharp thing. So even if something is done for your convenience, you can complain. If you're, 
if you if you're uncomfortable. Okay, the next group of songs are called We Shall Overcome songs, okay? And they're written by a woman named Imani who's over is older than me, she says. I think she just wants to be ahead. But anyway, you know how white people come up and tell you, I'm seventy eight and I'm only seventy two, right? They just want to be ahead. But I don't believe there's anybody older than me that's still alive. <laughs> okay. First, this is to the tune of Stout Hearted Men, the Marine song. It goes like this Give us some women, some, remember that tune? All right, here we go. Let's go, y'all. Give us some women, some tough hearted women who fight for the rights we are due. Women who dare, and some women who care, and all women who share our view. Longer and longer and stronger and stronger, the bonds of our union will grow. Then there's nothing in this world will mar or bar our way. When millions of women stand behind the ERA. How many men, women remember the ERA? <laughs> Okay, just wanted to know if you'd forgotten. Because it's kicking ass time. Okay. Next stars and stripes forever. Ever. Okay. And this is E R A, E R A, E R A. Remember that? Okay, here we go. E R A, E R A, E R A. We will stand on our platform forever. We say E R A, E R A. E-R-A is the only way, E-R-A, E-R-A, E-R-A is the one way to total liberation. We look to the day, to the day, when E-R-A becomes the law throughout the nation. Okay? <laughs> These songs are dated. Okay, all right, my good sister who likes to choke my ideas was nice enough to give me some ERA, I mean some, uh, some pills, I mean Tic Tac or something that's going to keep me from choking to death. So let's hear applause for my sister Gay Bale. Okay. We don't mind if sane people and Republicans are the death of the movement, but as long as they keep us supplied with uh, something to keep us talking, we've got to give them some kind of credit, right? Okay. All right. The Marine Hymn. It starts from kitchen door to Senate floor. Remember that? Okay, here we go. From kitchen door to Senate floor in the name of ERA. We will fight, fight, fight for women's rights to be equal all the way. We will fight till macho cries enough, till the history making day. When the sexist wall comes tumbling down to the tune of ER. Who said enough? What was, what's your name? What's your name, honey? Diane. That was Diane. My best friend is Diane Abrams, and she's married to Bob Abrams, who's uh, the heavy in the Tawana Brawley case, about which more later. Okay, but she's good people, and I wrote a book with her called Abortion Rep. Do you all have people that think women should have babies whether they want them or not if they get pregnant? No. You don't have people like that out here? I do have people like that. You do have some people like that out here? Okay. All right. Okay. Now, what else have we got, y'all? Well, oh, we got feminist prayer. Oh, I thought we did feminist prayer. No, just some of that. We did. All right, let's do Reuben, Reuben, Reagan, Reagan. Okay. All right. All right, Reuben, Reuben. Come on, let's go. Everybody got it. Okay. All right, any group that wants copies of these songs can get them from Claire or who's in the Women's Center? Uh, Gina. Oh, yeah. What are you doing back there? Get it up here. You little snob, get up 
here. How dare you? Honestly, you can't trust your best friend. Okay. All right. And I had a special song. I've got a song that we that I don't have here, but I'm going to teach it to you if I can remember the lyrics. I think I have a mild case of Alzheimer's, so I may not be able to, to remember the lyrics. But let's see. I meant to write it during the... Uh, uh, the rap session, but I got into a tirade over the uh, the uh, your newspaper and whether we should boycott it. How many people think we should boycott the the uh, Weird Herald here in Iowa? Ames Tribune. The Ames Tribune. Okay, I'll tell you about it. I'll tell you how you do it. Okay. All right. Okay, let's go. Ray gun, Ray gun, we've been thinking what a nation this could be if the management stopped dumping on the poor society. Ray gun, Ray gun, what a thinking world we've got the poor in pain and the big fat corporations waving from the gravy train. Peanuts, peanuts for the people, billions, billions for big cheese. Our tax dollars going, going up in space and overseas. Reagan, Reagan, won't you listen to the cries of human needs that are all but drowned completely by the roars of human greed. Reagan, Reagan, this whole nation could be going down the drain if they don't stop, look, and listen to the rage of human pain. Reagan, Reagan, we've been thinking what a nation this could be if the management stopped dumping on the poor majority. Give them the fist. Give them the finger. We have a special guest here tonight. Is Reed up here singing with him? He's a Republican, so he probably won't be. He also has a bad leg. That's probably his excuse. Where's Reed? Reed, if you didn't have a bad leg, would you be up here singing with us? Oh, you check out the words first. He doesn't want us to go against his leaders. How many people think that Reagan is a good leader? Well, at least he's cute and he's got post maturely brown hair. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. That may be about it. Do we have any other songs? <laughs> what was the other one? Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Come back, everybody. We've got the one that embarrassed my sister. Come on back. We've got to come back. Where is she's a lemon? I'm sorry. Where is she's a lemon? My sister probably sabotaged it. Here we go. No, you didn't. You better not, or I'll quit and walk out, honey. You don't know I'm crazy, honey. I'll walk out till you find it. Okay. All right, here we go. She's a lemon. Okay. All right. Let's go. Don't forget, people are dying because of the bigotry against uh, gay, gays and lesbians, so it's quite serious. It always is. Liz, um... Uh, Bigotry is very serious and it has life and death consequences. And in this case, it was standing there ready to give. In fact, you had an issue here on campus where there was a campus newspaper that put uh, the um, AIDS connection with gays and lesbians. And we have very fortunately a very smart uh, journalist, Claire, who is the editor of your paper, one of your papers, who put a very serious letter back. Okay, everybody got she's a lemon that wants it? Okay, my, my sister withdrew and sat down proudly. Okay, nothing could be sweeter than to find out that Anita is a lesbian. Nothing could be finer than her sharing her vagina with a woman. Even if she tried it out for all one day she'd find out what fun it is to be gay but it's bad she stopped
our civil rights are dead and brower. She's a lamb. Give us a kiss. Yay. Okay. And then there's another one. Whoa, 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 whoa. Everybody needs a hooker. Okay. This is dedicated to the decriminalization of prostitution, not the kind when you marry him, but the other kind. Okay. Okay. Legalized prostitution is when you're married for money and because you lost your job and he offered you his apartment. Okay. Are you offered him his? I mean, you offered him yours if he would come in and pay. Okay. And if you don't dig him sexually. Okay. All right. Everybody needs a hooker once in a while to blow away your clouds of gray and make the whole world smile. Old folks, young folks, just grab your phone and dial. Everybody needs a hooker once in a while. Now free love is sweet love we all admit. But free love is what you can always get. And life can get lonely when night starts to fall. And bought love is better than no love at all. Ho, 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 everybody needs a hooker once in a while to blow away your clouds of gray and make the whole world smile. Old folks and young folks just grab your phone and stop. Probably used to be a John. Are he bragged, he doesn't have to pay for it. Joe's how desperate we are. Okay. All right. A nice girl. This is Gary's uh, reason for getting out, sitting down. A nice girl on a date sells what her mama says. But she don't deliver what she promises. And pure married ladies, they sit at home and weep. They sold it for a wedding ring, and Lord, they sold it cheap. Ho, 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 everybody needs a hooker once in a while to blow away your clouds of gray and make the whole world smile. Old folks, young folks, just grab your phone and dial. Everybody needs a hooker once in a while if you've got a oh no 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 wait a minute i skipped one number three a hooker don't have to be wine and dine she just takes your money and not your time she's honest trustworthy she's brave clean and true she'll come when you call through ho 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 everybody needs a hooker once in a while blow away your clouds of gray and make the whole world smile old folks young folks just grab your phone and dial everybody needs a hooker once in a while if you got a fetish she'll never She'll whip you or stop popcorn in your ears. It's supposed to be sick. Or swing by her heels from the chandelier. Anything that she can do to bring you cheer. Ho, ho, ho. Everybody needs a hooker once in a while to blow away your clouds of gray and make the whole world smile. Old folks, young folks, just grab your phone and dial. Everybody needs a hooker once in a while. Give them the fist. Okay, in a whorehouse society, I, wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. One more on South Africa. Anybody embarrassed to sing a song about South Africa against apartheid? I hope not. Okay, here we go. 
International Diamond Ring. Oh. A ring on the hand may be very aesthetic as long as you forget the source. But diamonds and gold come from workers pathetic in oppressive minds where they don't get no valentine. Women crave while workers slave to deliver the gold and the gems. Don't buy marriage bologial or pro product colonial. Foster is the world's worst fiend. A fiend. <laughs> okay, fiend. It's different from friend. Okay, all right. The, the, are there any, any other songs you hear to Okay. Okay, we're supposed to be talking about the wit and humor of oppressed people. Uh, well, I want to keep some of these in case I want to have some more made up. So I'll just take these and stick them in here. Okay, thanks. Okay, all right. So we want to think about what's humorous about oppression. Now, the only thing that I can think of that's humorous about oppression is that it's very good for testicular pressure. And women have been made fun of for years. Our asses are too fat for pants and... Uh, our tits are too large, they're too small, our, our hair is too straight, it's too curly, so constantly we're building up our tits and sm smoothing down our hair and ruffling up our hair and, and you know, they can be bald and fat and skinny and stippies. Anybody know what a stippy is? They're usually Republicans and right-wingers. <laughs> Anybody remember what the stippy is? They remember, but they're too embarrassed to say. It's members, I made up the name when I went to the University of Pennsylvania and the women were almost in tears because there were some fraternity chaps that were making fun of the women and talking about them very badly in every imaginable way and the women got upset and when I got there they were almost in tears. And I made up the name of Stippies because obviously these men had some kind of an animus and it was obviously nothing that was apparent. You couldn't figure why they were so angry that they would mistreat people that they thought were inferior, which is a very cheap thing, like Mike Tyson beating up, uh, what's her name, Robin. So anyway, anyway, um, I decided on that they were members of a secret society called the Stippies. The Stippies are the society of the two-inch pricks. So you probably have a few of them out here. One that's nationwide is Martin, Martin Downey Jr. Do you all have Martin Downey Jr. out here? Okay, on radio the other day, I was doing a program with a guy named Dr. Something, or I can't think of his name, I will in a minute. I have a mild form of uh, Alzheimer's along with everything else. And uh, he, uh, uh, Dr. Berger, Stuart Berger, and he, I, t I talked about this uh, Stippies and Society of the Two Inch Pricks in reference to Martin Downey. And um, he um, got a call that said the prick was obscene. I think it depends on what you do with it, actually. <laughs> but I, had to, I thought it was colloquial and disrespectful, but I didn't think it was obscene. It makes it sound like these guys are uh, gods or something. I don't know. Anyway, I gather that you have a paper of which you think very little. How many people don't think much of the Tribune? Okay. All right. Okay, and there are a few papers on campus some of you don't think very much. Some of you, how many of you have reservations against some of the papers on campus? Okay. Okay. I won't suggest that those papers are editorially staffed by stippies, but you might consider it in case there's nothing apparently wrong to make these people so upset with women controlling their own breeding processes. So you can, whenever you see somebody that seems unnecessarily angry at people who never did very much to them except give birth to them, you might ask yourself if by any chance they're stippies. Because Women as a class have caused most people to come into existence. I don't know many people that came into existence other than through a woman. And when you find serious sexism, gratuitous and uncalled for, which is kind of the same sort of thing, you want to ask yourself, are they by any chance stippies? Because you might be a little bit angry if somebody gave birth to you 
and you wound up a stippy. So uh, that might account for some of the sexism in our society. Some, I don't suggest that you try to measure Bush, but just keep it in mind. And I would be perfectly prepared to stipulate that quail could very well be one to something. Something's wrong with him doing it all the time. Because when people, for no reason, you know, if you got $200 million, you would think you could be straight about most things. Well, ain't nobody going to oppress you. And yet, if you're lying about this, what your name is practically, you might wonder if you've got a rare case of stippies among the multimillionaires. <laughs> but when people laugh about things like that, I guess that's what the wit and humor of the feminist has to be, because the best thing you've got in the way of the testicular approach is humor. And the other thing where media are concerned is the boycott. Now, because of the Tawana Brawley case, how many people think Tawana Brawley was faking this whole business? I'm glad most of you have too much shame and taste and brains to raise your hands, because you know I've got a case. Okay, all right, now I'm going to talk to you about that. It's not humorous, but it's kind of serious. Okay, I'm going to read you a thing we got out just before I came out here. In fact, it was delivered to me about an hour before I left for the plane. And I'm going to leave some with Claire and some other people that might want to raise some questions about how our society can turn a victim into a villain. Okay? On Tuesday, the 27th of September, 1988, the New York Times published an article accusing Tawana Brawley of having fabricated the report of her rape, assault, and disfigurement. On Wednesday, the 28th of September, 1988, this is all just last week, the New York Times publisher this past week, published an editorial stating that Tawana Brawley is a liar and Mr. Maddox, Mr. Mason, and Mr. Sharpton are charlatans. Tawana Brawley, then 15 years old, disappeared on the 24th of November, 1987. She was found on the 28th of November, 1987, according to the hospital and ambulance records obtained by the City Sun, which is a black newspaper in New York, Tawana, uh, uh, City Sun. Tawana Brawley was found unconscious, unresponsive, her breathing was shallow, her pulse was irregular, her pupils dilated, showing no reaction, and her skin was cool, cyanotic, and dry. How many people know which of those uh, symptoms you can simulate? Anybody aware? Any nurses here? Any nurses here? Any health uh, people here, health personnel work in the health? Nobody's here from those areas. But uh, does anybody in her or his own experience know how you could fake those conditions? Okay, we wonder if the New York Times uh, read those hospital reports. Okay. She had second, first and second degree burns over 36% of her body. Tawana Brawley did not respond to pain or voice. She was covered with feces, her vaginal arrow was badly swollen, and a white discharge was detected. Final diagnosis at Westchester County Medical Center was rape. Of course, that was reinforced by her story. If you don't believe her story, I don't know how you dispose of the other symptoms. Maybe, you, maybe like a blowfish, you can blow something and make your uh, vagina swell. I don't know. Tawana Brawley told the police she had been raped and sexually assaulted by six white males, three of whom she named. Harry J. Christ, a part-time police officer who later was reported to have committed suicide, though no weapon was found. Does anybody have a theory on how if she fabricated this story, uh, it connected to Harry J. Christ's suicide? Or do you buy the idea that he committed suicide because his fiance was being difficult and he failed a civil service exam. I don't know of many. Anybody ever know anybody that failed a civil service exam or a lost bar, bar exam? You ever hear of anybody committing suicide for that reason? Anybody know anybody that had trouble with his fiance and committed suicide? That's a little more likely, but in this case, I think the coincidence of his doing it a couple of days after this accusation was made might make it have more relevance than the normal case of such conduct as a response to unhappy love affairs and failed uh, civil service exams. Stephen Pagonis, a Dutchess County 
assistant district attorney and the police that received the evidence of her condition at the time she went to the hospital was one of Pagonis's assistants. Wonder why one of the accused people sent one of his own assistants to collect the evidence. And Scott Patterson, a state trooper. Not one of those named assailants was ever arrested, nor was Tawana shown photographs of other law enforcement officials despite repeated requests. The foregoing account is based upon news reports from the black press. The white press treated it somewhat differently. They rarely addressed themselves to the people that were accused, nor did they speculate as to why Carrie Chris committed suicide or why Stephen Pagonis, uh, DA, sent his man to pick up the evidence, which has never been seen since. Okay. We urge the boycott of the advertisers of the New York Times and the rest of the white press, incidentally those especially those which do not advertise in the black press. Furthermore, we urge support of the advertisers with the black press, because it was the black press that turned up most of this. For more information, please contact Pro Kennedy. Now, if you ever get angry enough, for instance, was it, uh, is, has there been very much snide uh, editorial comment or news reporting on the gay and lesbian community out here? That's usually one of the niggerized areas from your Tribune. How do the gay and lesbian people feel about the coverage by the Tribune? If you feel you're being niggerized by the Tribune, that's one of the ways you deal with them. You don't just stop buying their paper, but you make a list of their major advertisers. If you were going to boycott them now, you would uh, probably start with the J.C. Penney um, insert, because somebody went out and got me a copy of the paper, and I noticed that they have a special from J.C. Penney. How many people would find it a tremendous hardship not to buy with J.C. Penney for a political reason? Okay, because there seems to be a consensus that the, the uh, Tribune does not have a high standing in the thoughts of most of the people on this campus. Okay, all right. So when you find a newspaper or a, a network or anybody else that insults people that you care about, you boycott. That's the way you respond. And uh, that there are three kinds of powers we all have in addition to humor, which I will say very little because I don't know why we have to be funny. But it's okay if we want to be. We can always call them stippies. But um, we um, have the dollar power. We have the body power. That's what we walk around with and do our classes and teach and, and make cookies and whatever else we make. By the way, uh, who was it that made the great cookies? But Claire made some beautiful chocolate chip cookies, of which you might have a quarter if you meet me at the reception later on, if my sister hasn't eaten them all up. And um, so that's body power. And then there's uh, voting power. And we're all in an uproar about voting power, because Iowa, being one of the first states, or if not the first state, where the primaries begin to show results, you have a disproportionate amount of focus. Also, my brother and uh, my brother-in-law is from Waterloo, the Irish one, and the one that died is from Hampton. And a lot of his family are here, probably totally embarrassed because I think they think more like my sister than like y'all or me. His brother, his uh, brother Eddie, is there with his wife Millie and their kid Sandy and Eddie Jr. and a whole bunch of my Iowa relatives. They won't hold up their hands because they don't want to admit they're my relatives. So. <laughs> Anyway, um, they're decent, God-fearing Iowans from formerly from Hampton, now from Des Moines, and they're good people. So don't y'all start no shit with them, because I'll be back. <laughs> Reed is also here, and he credits me with having inspired him to run for the Republican state assembly, assembly or senate, huh? The House, the House. You don't call it assembly out here, the state, your Iowa State House. And he's, um, uh, I'm glad to have inspired him, albeit he's a Republican, but I thought my best friends are Republicans, so I'll assume he was one of the better ones. Okay. In fact, a black friend of mine, Florence Rice, is very political on consumer grounds. Many Republicans in the black community are Republicans because they had been dumped on and had, they didn't have the haircut and shit 
literally spilt, smeared on them, but in a political way they had. And after what uh, Dukakis did to Jesse Jackson, I think there'll be probably some more. Although I would think we ought to go socialist rather than to go Republican, but uh, in a country where you can get killed for all the right reasons. But I would love, I'd love to. I hope that's a, I hope that's a vote for black people going Repub uh, going. I also think that we ought to consider a wing of the Democrat Party within the party called the Jacksonian Democrats, in which we would go and form Jacksonian Democratic uh, groups and proceed more under Jesse Jackson with the hope that even although he may never become uh, president, he will influence those people who voted for him. Anybody here prepared to admit they voted for Jesse Jackson? Oh, goody. Okay, great. All right. So y'all could be a conscience for the Democrat Party out here and, uh, you know, start out by urging people to vote if you think Jesse's right in urging people to vote and maybe sitting it out if you think he's not. But I think that it's really important that Jesse Jackson be supported. How many of you could conceive the idea of forming a Jacksonian wing within the Democrat Party? Okay? All right. So maybe what we'll do, would somebody make up a sheet that says Jacksonian Democrats mailing list, even if you wouldn't consider joining, you might like to be on the mailing list in case anything ever happens. And uh, you could uh, have, uh, maybe you could have a debate between now and November over whether or not the, ja the Jacksonian Democrats should 